uh, we were talking about polar plots. Polar plot is uh, one of important tools uh, which is utilized for the analysis of uh, control systems. And you know that uh, polar plots convey the same information as Bode diagrams. In the last lecture, we have learned how to sketch polar plots. Uh, and we continue that discussion. We take a few more transfer functions and obtain their polar plots. So the transfer function uh, is given over here. Its frequency response uh, is obtained by uh, this relation. We simply substitute S equal to J omega. And then we determine a few points. Uh, the simplest choice of those points is omega equal to 0. For omega equal to 0, uh, we have uh, this term, uh, this omega equal to 0. Uh, so 1 multiplied by 1. In, and here, if we substitute omega equal to 0, we have this thing. Uh, so if we can write this complex number in polar form. So what is magnitude of uh, this complex number? 1 divided by 0 is infinity and angle of that complex number is minus 90 degrees. So corresponding to omega equal to 0, we have g of j omega equal to infinity angle minus 90 degrees. Another uh, convenient point is uh, omega uh, approaches infinity and in that case 1 over j omega uh, this one so j infinity this second term uh, another j infinity and third j infinity. Uh, this can also be written in polar form. So 1 over infinity its magnitude is 0 and phase angle of this complex number is minus 270 degrees. Mi minus 90 due to this j, minus 90 due to this j and minus 90 due to this j. So you have uh, 0 angle minus 270 degrees. So so minus 90 is angle due to this uh, term, minus 90 is the angle due to this term and minus 90 is angle due to this term. So total angle if the factors are multiplied their angles are simply added. So minus 90 plus minus 90 plus minus 90 you get minus 270 degrees. Is it clear? So here is uh, the complex plane. And we can uh, uh, represent uh, these points that is uh, omega equal to 0 uh, corresponds to uh, this situation. Here this symbol means that uh, uh, this uh, axis is uh, broken from over here that is uh, so that we can represent a uh, vector with uh, magnitude equal to infinity. So this point corresponds to omega equal to 0 and uh, the, this is infinity angle minus 90 degrees. And uh, the point corresponding to omega as uh, uh, this uh, omega approaches infinity that is uh, we have uh, 0 and an angle of minus 270 degrees. So here we draw a vector with an angle of minus 270 degrees and with a magnitude length of the vector equal to 0. So that vector is uh, at the origin. So this, po this point corresponds to omega equal to infinity. We have uh, information about uh, two points and uh, now we can uh, have a very rough sketch uh, of the polar plot. And for polar plots, uh, you do not need uh, precise uh, plots. You only need a rough sketch. So how should we sketch it? Uh, you can see that angle uh, is becoming uh, more and more negative uh, and magnitude is decreasing. So omega equal to 0 corresponds to this point. Length of the vector will uh, decrease and angle will become more and more negative. So a rough sketch will be uh, somehow like this one. Uh, can we also draw it in this way, for example, starting from here, moving here and then going to this thing? No, because angle is minus 270 degrees. So if uh, omega is, for example, slightly less than uh, infinity, then angle will be uh, uh, maybe minus 269 uh, degrees. Uh, so that point is over here. 
So, this is uh, a rough sketch of polar plots and in polar plots you already remember uh, one information you need it very precisely. That information is crossing of this graph on the real axis. So, we can also determine the crossing of this graph on the real axis. So, how to do that? Uh, rationalize uh, this complex number. So, this uh, complex function uh, is rationalized. We multiply both the numerator and denominator by complex conjugate of this term and complex conjugate of this term. So, this uh, becomes... Uh, So, even uh, the question is uh, should we also multiply uh, this term with minus g omega? Yes, you can do that, but uh, that will make uh, the things slightly complex. Even if we do not multiply it with minus g omega, still we can split uh, this function uh, in real and imaginary parts. So, if you want to multiply it with uh, the complex conjugate of this term, yes, you can do that but that will uh, simply uh, make it a little bit more complex. So, here uh, is uh, this thing and uh, if uh, you multiply it for example with minus g omega, this minus g omega, this j will also disappear from here, but uh, we can also uh, uh, remove it uh, by simply bringing j in the numerator, that is uh, easier. So, that is uh, we can write it in this form we have split uh, the, this complex uh, function as uh, a real part and an imaginary part. And to determine this point, what we shall do is that we shall substitute the imaginary part to be equal to 0 uh, to determine this crossing on the real axis. So, if we substitute this imaginary part equal to 0, so uh, you see that uh, omega equal to 1 over square root of 2, uh, that makes uh, this uh, thing equal to 0. Omega equal to infinity, that also makes uh, this thing to be equal to uh, 0, because in the denominator it will be omega uh, power 5 and in the numerator we have omega square. So, omega equal to infinity also makes this expression to equal to be equal to 0. So, we have uh, already uh, represented uh, this point uh, that was uh, uh, this uh, that's, this was mapped over here and uh, now how to determine uh, this complex number corresponding to this frequency. We simply substitute this omega over here or more easily we substitute uh, this omega over here uh, and then we get uh, g of j omega at omega equal to 1 over square root of 2 that is equal to minus 2 by 3. That is uh, this value is minus 2 by 3. So, this is a polar plot for this transfer function. Uh, how we shall use it for the analysis of control systems? We shall learn it later. Over here, we are just learning how to sketch polar plots. So, any question up to this point? And one more observation is that uh, uh, we can see that as omega tends to 0, real part is equal to minus 3. So, if you want to have a more precise sketch of polar plot, uh, this uh, real part will at infinity it will be somewhere here minus 3. This point is minus 2 by 3 and minus 3 is somewhere uh, more uh, to the left. So, more precise sketch of the polar plot will start from uh, for example here go through this uh, crossing and then this one. However, that accuracy is not generally required. In other transfer function and again its frequency response uh, uh, two points which can be easily determined correspond to omega equal to 0. Uh, with uh, this point uh, we have uh, 1 over 8. Uh, that is point zero one two uh, point uh, one two five angle zero degrees. Uh, this is a real number, so angle is equal to zero degrees. Omega equal to infinity. We have this situation, and uh, uh, how to write it in polar form? What do we get? What is magnitude? Zero and angle minus two seventy degrees. 
so it is incorrectly written it is incorrectly written it should be minus sorry uh, here is no square right this is by mistake this is the no there is no square over here uh, this was j omega plus 4 so there is no square and uh, the magnitude comes out to be 0 and angle minus 180 uh, 90 minus 90 due to this uh, factor and minus 90 due to this factor this square is mistakenly written so where are these points mapped in this complex plane uh, where is this point uh, this uh, point uh, 1 to 5 angle 0 degrees it is on the real axis positive side and uh, somewhere over here and this point is uh, uh, a vector with length equal to 0 and angle uh, oriented in a direction of minus 180 degrees so that is over here so these two points so what do you think uh, what should be the sketch of the polar plot rough sketch based on the information of these two points right so it will cross the imaginary axis and then uh, for example uh, this uh, is uh, a shape uh, you can even find a few more points uh, that is crossing of uh, this graph on the real axis and on the imaginary axis the procedure is the same you rationalize this complex function uh, and uh, split uh, this into real and imaginary parts so here is again a mistake you have to multiply it by its complex conjugate uh, so here should be minus j omega and here should also be minus j omega and likewise minus j omega minus j omega over here and uh, after uh, rationalization uh, you get uh, you get this expression and substitute the real part to be equal to 0 to determine the crossing of this graph on the imaginary axis so that is substituted equal to 0 so you have uh, omega equal to square root of 8 likewise you substitute the imaginary part to be equal to 0 to determine the crossing of this graph on the real axis if any so that corresponds to omega equal to 0 and omega equal to infinity uh, we have already determined uh, these points of this uh, complex number at omega equal to square root of 8 that is uh, equal to minus j 0 0.056 where is this point somewhere over here so you have three points and then you can simply sketch the polar plot for this uh, transfer function that looks like this one it is rough sketch In other transfer function, its frequency response obtained by simply substituting s equal to j omega, uh, omega equal to 0, that corresponds to 1 divided by 2 multiplied by 2 is 1 by 4, and this is 0.25 angle 0 degrees. Omega equal to infinity, and uh, we have uh, this uh, j omega and this j omega square over here, so 1 over j omega. Uh, multiplied by j omega square and magnitude 0 and angle minus 270 degrees and uh, these points on this complex plane are one point is here another point is here so what is the shape of the polar plot based on the information of these two right it will cross uh, both the uh, imaginary axis and uh, uh, real axis it will start from here uh, go from here also cross the real axis and then uh, uh, reach uh, to this point uh, we can also determine those points uh, by rationalizing uh, this uh, function here uh, we multiply it by its complex conjugate and uh, then uh, uh, that uh, you get this one this thing and uh, split it into real parts and imaginary part to determine the crossing of the real axis you uh, substitute uh, the imaginary part to be equal to 0 and uh, 
that uh, uh, implies that omega equal to 0, omega equal to square root of 6 and omega equal to infinity. These are uh, the points uh, which corresponds to crossing of the real axis. And to determine the crossing of imaginary axis, we substitute the real part of this thing to be equal to 0. Uh, we have substituted it equal to 0 and that corresponds to frequency omega equal to 1 and omega equal to infinity. Omega equal to 1 is obvious from the numerator and omega equal to infinity also makes it to be equal to 0. Uh, corresponding to these frequencies 0 and infinity, we have already computed this uh, complex number and uh, corresponding to omega equal to square root of 6, uh, we can simply substitute omega equal to square, square root of 6 over here or more easily uh, over here uh, and uh, then we get uh, this thing equal to minus 0 0.05. This term will become equal to 0 and rest of the terms substituted you get this thing. And uh, similarly you can compute uh, this complex uh, function uh, for omega equal to 1 and that comes out to be equal to this thing. So you have a few more points uh, that is uh, uh, one point which corresponds to omega equal to 1 and another point which corresponds to omega equal to square root of 6. Uh, so, you have one point here which corresponds to omega equal to 0, this point corresponds to omega equal to 1, uh, this point corresponds to omega equal to square root of 6 and this point corresponds to omega equal to uh, infinity. So, now uh, uh, sketch is clear. So, this uh, graph will start from here, move in this direction and then uh, finally reach at this point. So, this is uh, a sketch of the polar plot. We also append an arrow on this graph to indicate the direction of increasing frequency. Uh, more accurate polar plots uh, can be obtained by using software tools. Here is the uh, Nyquist plot of the same transfer function and later we shall learn that this half of this Nyquist plot uh, is basically the polar plot, not exactly half, but we are just uh, using this word half over here because we have still not talked about Nyquist plots. So, uh, this uh, shape, uh, this shape uh, is more accurate obtained using software tools and this is the one which we have obtained by only determination of a few points. So, is there any question regarding this discussion? So, in the uh, next uh, lecture we shall talk about Nyquist plots and uh, this thing, this plot is basically the Nyquist plot of this transfer function and uh, uh, MATLAB, uh, there is a command in MATLAB Nyquist which can be utilized to sketch the Nyquist plot and uh, since uh, this polar plot is only a subset of this uh, Nyquist plot. So, there is no separate command in MATLAB to obtain the polar plots.